Get this, people who suffer from a severe mental illness three times more likely to be in jail or prison than in a mental health facility. And you just take the case of Jerome Murdo. He, the former Marine, who was jailed at Rikers after he was caught trespassing, literally sleeping on a stoop of a local housing complex. Officials say he was trying to escape the cold. Nobody debates it. But he died. He baked to death in his cell when the room reached unbearable temperatures. And Michelle Byram, a Mississippi inmate who's also battling mental illness, is on death row in the death of her husband, her life on the line, even though her son confessed to the murder. She was set to be executed last week, however, granted a new trial. And recently, a homeless man who also suffered from mental illness, shot and killed by police in New Mexico after he was caught camping out in an unauthorized area. Police. Um, uh, you know, uh, there are many claims against the cops at this point. But, Jimmy, we see this time after time. You hear from people um, from the prosecution side of it. You hear from people um, even on the correction officers and the jails themselves saying, we know these guys don't be belong here, but more and more it's falling on our plates. Um, you must see it also in court. It seems to be happening a heck of a lot more than it used to, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> and what it demonstrates, I mean, th this is a failure of, of tremendous proportions in many regards, but, you know, we are acting like we're a society ill-equipped to deal with the mentally ill, and we're not. You know, we act as though we Ill we're ill-equipped, so we take a former Marine who's trespassing because he's, he wants to get out of the cold, and we throw him in jail and set $2,500 bail on him and then the whole issue of what's going on at Rikers and how anybody could bake to death in 100 plus degree temperatures yep. with nobody checking on them, that, that's yet another story. But we're not ill-equipped to deal with these people. We have devised programs for people who are drug addicts, people who have all sorts of problems. There is a mental health court that is finally being established where you put people into these clinics and we try to help them. And we're not doing that. Instead, we're imprisoning them. They don't belong there. We're ill-equipped to deal with them in prison. We're not ill-equipped to deal with them as human beings. We're just not paying enough attention to doing that. But we're certainly ill-equipped to deal with them while they're incarcerated. And that's why in 2013, you had 55 suicides within the prison system alone. Mm. Uh, and, and, and forget about all the other deaths. We're seeing this across the spectrum. We saw the case, that tragic case, where a congressman's son Remember mm -hmm. the 60 Minutes profile, the congressman's son, he knew the kid was a threat to himself and others, but they wouldn't hold him because they've cut back so much on funding here, um, uh, facilities for these people, and they can't hold him anymore. And the ERs are the place of last refuge. But for people who think, oh, this is just, this is playing out in the courtrooms. I've heard judges talk about how Absolutely. outrageous it is. The prisons are saying that they're, and I've heard attorneys say, he doesn't belong here. And the prosecutor says, I'm with you, but what, do you, what can I do, That's right. right? That's right. And, and, and again, nobody knows what to do, so let's all play it safe because let's face it, the judges are scared to let them out because if something happens, they'll get the bad publicity. Everybody's scared to, to make a bold move and deal with these people effectively. When, when that's what we should be doing. And instead, they're behind bars under those conditions. Jimmy, Doug, Mark, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it tonight. That's all the time that we have for this evening. We'll see you tomorrow night, as always, at 6 p.m. Till then.